So here we are marking the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Corregidor, and being that Lieutenant Crotty was the only U.S. Coast Guardsman to fight in the Battle of Corregidor, this was the perfect opportunity to honor his service and sacrifice. Uh, the U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. Embassy Manila, we remain committed to recognizing the legacy of our uh, Filipino and American veterans and, and, and their efforts here in the Philippines. As I look out across these hallowed grounds, I'm reminded of a quote by Admiral Nimitz that is inscribed on the World War II. James Eugene Crotty. While we remember and honor our solemn obligation to all the American and Filipino soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen interred and memorialized in these quiet grounds, we are gathered here today to share the story of sacrifice and heroism of a fellow Coast Guardsman, Lieutenant Jimmy Crotty, and to inspire a new generation of Coast Guard men and women to continue his legacy of selfless devotion to duty and Coast Guard core values. Lieutenant Crotty's story is, an exceptional, is, a, is as exceptional as his leadership was extraordinary. In 1930, Lieutenant Crotty entered the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, where he played on the basketball and football teams, served as a company commander, and was elected vice president and president of his class. In the Academy 1934 yearbook, his peers wrote of him, Lieutenant Crotty will be missed by all of us when we come to the temporary parting of ways but in the future will be in light Naval District Headquarters at Fort Mills, Corregidor Island, continued demolishing American equipment and facilities before the assets could benefit the enemy. In mid-December, Lieutenant Crotty was assigned as executive officer on USS Quail, a U.S. Navy minesweeper, which shot down enemy aircraft and swept American minefields to enable U.S. submarines to surface at night to deliver critical supplies. Were combined with a very pleasant personality and a willingness to assist everyone to the limit of his ability. He continued to remain very cheerful and retained a high morale until, his de until my departure. It's almost indescribable, but it really is. There are two heroes, every one of them.
every one of them was a hero. And they had no way of knowing that they were going to be abandoned by our government. And, you know, uh, yeah, they were incredible men. Uh, yeah, he, he just uh, told his Admiral uh, Garcia said to me, you know, we're all sacrifices and uh, you know uh, one and all. We have the same uh, ethics as we did back in World War II. Nothing has changed. We uh, do the honor and country. You know, and we all ask them, you know, the personal is last on the list. You know, do the honor and country. Yeah. That's what I live by when in my 40 years in the Coast Guard. <laughs> Yeah, it seems nowadays that history seems to be forgotten. And I identify with Lieutenant Crotty uh, and, and look to him now that I know his full story uh, as a trailblazer serve here in World War II as the only U.S. Coast Guardsman alongside fellow sailors, soldiers, and Marines. In many ways, uh, he carved the path for those uh, U.S. Coast Guard men and women who now serve in places like ceremony for Lieutenant Crotty is, as I said in my remarks, his experience is, is as unique as his leadership was great. Uh, he was the only U.S. Coast Guardsman to serve in the Battle of Corregidor. Uh, he was able to serve on a U.S. Navy ship. He served with U.S. Marine soldiers on Corregidor Island as well as U.S. Marines. So he has a truly unique experience and, and to be a part of remembering him alongside